Yeah, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to bring those guys in. What's the, what's the schedule going to look like? Oh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> it's, it's, almost, it's almost like they're trying to figure out how to record an po- uh, episode of My Got a Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to My Got a Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In the season four premiere episode, John Powell and I get caught up on what's happened since we last talked. We talk about G Day, the new UGA, the NFL draft, a little recruiting, and we answer questions from you, our listeners. As always, remember to check out store.mygotapodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media, My Got a Podcast. Finally, we want to thank Oxia Time for being our presenting sponsor last season. Be sure to check them out at oxiatime.com. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. Was this was this our longest hiatus we've had? Might Probably. Be close to it. <laughs> I'm close to it. Uh, it's definitely it's definitely the longest between like fake outs of hey we're recording and then we don't record. <laughs> uh, good to be back. Sorry, Ma- most mostly my bad, but I don't know. Off season schedules can get weird at times. So uh. yeah, I, I a thousand percent blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair. That's how fair. many times? How many times the, the, did they joke in the in the text threads? Like it'd be nice if we could record a podcast, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, seriously. Uh, my bad, my bad. Uh, but bringing up more these days. Uh, should have time to get some more off season content. But I mean, we we had some ideas of some other things to do, but f- kind of figured we hadn't talked in a while, so maybe we should just catch up. <laughs> yeah. Might as well. There's been uh, there's been a few things that have happened uh, in the last between the last time that we recorded and now. I know this is definitely uh, the 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 latest we've recorded after 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 G Day, um, which like I was trying to remember because like it, it it's it's uh, the last two years has been like right with our spring break, um, or last several years really. But like I know like last year G Day I think was the day I was driving to the beach on spring break. This year it was like at the end of our spring break. Um, and your spring break was what the week before ours, right? So I think we were both out of town right around there, from what I can re- remember. Yep, our we had Carter had baseball going on as well. Uh, that was another that was another thing that was happening too. So oh, that's right, that's right. The sports, spring, the spring break in baseball. Yep, the sports, the sports balls are are always are always problematic for us parents. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we're picking up a new thing next year. Uh, I haven't told you this yet. Um, is it pickle? Is it pickleball? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't, I didn't, man, I didn't even have that in the, in the show notes to discuss. <laughs> uh, no, the newfound, but to, the, the newfound wood pastime <laughs> pickleball is amazing. I recommend, uh, if you, you know, used to play tennis like me, you can pick it up uh, fairly quickly, but it's a nuanced game. There's some differences. Um, no. So Lily is going to, so Lily is off to high school next year. So we're going to have two high schoolers in the fall. And uh, crazy. Lily just, she decided as of yesterday, she had said she didn't want to do it. Now she does. She changed her mind. Uh, she's going to be doing the marching band. Um, yeah. So, okay. uh, so we'll have, you know, like all the, all the Friday night lights going on. In, in the ah. in the fall at the local high school, so so we're gonna have we're gonna have my got a podcast on location uh, for recruiting purposes. <laughs> hey, if there's any, any you know anyone big that's coming through <laughs> playing against Cox Mill High School in Concord, North Carolina, I'll be on the scene. Nice. Um, I popped my bird, but and I didn't mention what it was. Uh, I've got the old Forester 1920 tonight. Um, mm. Have felt a bit of a cold starting to come on, and this is what I use to knock those out. Uh, so trying to do that tonight, knocking out those those summertime cobwebs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I have uh, old granddad bonded the the old stalwart, the old stalwart hundred prover. It's so good. It's such a it good is. one. Mm-hmm. Did I tell you about that? I bought the old granddad wood fourteen, and then I left it somewhere. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. Where'd you, so, where'd you say you were? Le- where, I can't remember where you. I said left you it left. at my parents' house and on, on, oh, right. on trip. Yeah, we. I bought it over spring break and then I forgot to bring it home. So, Dad, if you're listening, there's a bottle of old Granddad 114 that for, waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's like, well, there was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all exactly. gone now. Oh man. Um. 
so I guess the, I think we, we had a couple of things we wanted to catch up on and then we'll probably get into some more like things that are happening right now. But, you know, we, we mentioned GD briefly, like, did you have any major takeaway from it? I mean, I think the biggest thing was, you know, people, people that know me around here, they ask, you know, like, Hey, you think George is going to be good? Like I couldn't really tell from G day. And it's like, well, you're not really, yeah. it's not really designed to show you much of anything. Mm-hmm. If any, if anything, I would look at the first quarter, right? You just look at the very beginning. Cause that felt like the most like good on good, even though I don't know that that's necessarily true for the defensive side, but um, yeah, all, th- all things being equal, the first quarter or so was supposed to be like, you know, the best versus the best. Right. And then they like start sh- shaking things up as, as time wore on, particularly on the offensive side. Mm-hmm. Beck looked really sharp in that period of good on good, quote unquote. Yeah. I don't know if they designed it that way or, or what, but he definitely looked sharp. Um, so it ga- it gives me, gives me hope for the, for the future. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that we're probably not going to put him in spots where he's going to have to do too much because our defense is going to be so like ridiculous again. So it's probably going to be a lot like last year where, you know, they're not going to really ask him to do too much. And as long as he protects the ball and with his and makes good decisions and makes his reads, um, you know, we should be, we should be fine. I, I, <laughs> I actually said this to a guy earlier today um, when I was hanging out at, at Carter at, at um, Camden's, Camden swim team that had a little thing and I was talking to one of the dads who's also an alum and uh, he was asking me about it. And I said, you know, the one thing that kind of always has been in the back of my head and I can't remember who brought it up on the text thread on the dog central text thread, but um, the thing that always kind of bothers me about this team is always going to be just in the back of my head. And it's for better or for worse, it's Stacey Searles and our ability to get, keep the offensive line, like up, uh. up to up, up, you know, up to par, up to what we've been used to. So we've seen some three stars coming through, which is kind of like, uh, we haven't had mm. that in a while. Yeah. So it's, you know, <laughs> was it, what was it Lamar who said that he was like the king of the three star, like diamond mm. and recruits? Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think that I'm, I'm going to be watching the offensive line basically from now on, from now on and seeing how, how it goes. Um, because that's going to be, if, if we can keep, if we can keep Carson Beck clean, like I think we're gonna have a a, a good, sh- a better shot of of three peating than we than we already do. <laughs> yeah, man, I thought you and Stacy like buried the hatchet when you guys shared a moment after either Tennessee or Tech, whenever that was last year. John, I'm kind of I don't know, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> I we did we did have an, a nice moment, and I did bury the hatchet, but. Gosh darn it! He keeps recruiting these three-star offensive linemen, and it really bothers me. <laughs> I'm like, bro, uh, we've been we've been pulling five-star and four-star offensive linemen for the last like four or five years. <laughs> like, why why are we doing this? Right, right, yeah, yeah. No, I, I yeah, I mean, I guess I was pretty much watching for quarterback play as well. You know, we heard some things coming out of spring, like weren't really sure what we were hearing, like what's Beck looking like. Um, but he, I don't know, to me, he really separated himself there. So, which is what I was hoping to see someone do that. I guess the, the surprising thing to me was that all three guys that are already here stayed, um, you know, so we were able to keep Vandegrift, um, and Stockton. I mean, I don't think there was much a thought of Stockton leaving, but Vandegrift, I'm I'm impressed, but that the staff was able to, you know, keep him in the fold, um, which is a good thing, right? You always want to have that depth. So, but yeah, I because I, I, I was kind of wondering like if someone kind of stood out in G Day, would could there be like a QB exodus kind of thing? And the staff was able to keep that room intact, which is good. Yeah, I, I'm also curious like what's going on because you saw a lot of shuffling in the offseason with the transfer portal. I'm wondering if guys are you know hitting the portal, thinking that they might be able to get a better a better situation, a better deal, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, we've, we've we've heard Nick Saban talk a little bit about that this week, right? Um, yeah. yeah. But, uh, I mean, maybe maybe what happened is is that he thought that maybe maybe he thought that he'd get out, but, um, you know, they, they tested the waters and n- n- nothing better than, than playing for the back-to-back national champions. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> seriously. 
Sorry, I had to bring back the portal noises. My bad. <laughs> the portal, the portal is, has returned. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, for sure, for sure, totally agreed. Okay, uh, I guess the other thing that happened at G Day was the collaring of the new Uga. So Q Q is no longer uh, Uga on the sidelines, and we've switched to Boom, which I really just mainly wanted to mention so that we could say Boom on the podcast because we hadn't talked since then. Uh, what a name! What a name! What a name for this team, for this coaching staff. So you know, I, I, obviously having uh, Muschamp on staff just makes that extra special. I'm, I'm wondering if that was part of the reason for 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 actually picking him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows? Like when they named him, could that have been part of it? We don't know. I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. We'll have to we'll have to put glasses on it and figure that out. Someone's gonna have to get the the story behind Boom. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Didn't didn't we used to have like I, I, that was something that I always thought was Lauren Lauren and and Larry were always good about like explaining some of the names. Like I remember mm. there was like there was one in particular. It was like McGillicuddy or something like that. Like <laughs> yeah, like yes. that. And it was like a, a super long name, but like yes. it was, then he had a short name. <laughs> right. Right. Seriously. But here, no, we just have boom, just boom, boom, and it's cute. just boom. boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and like the the shorter ones were usually like the shorter names are usually like the interim ones. Like Otto was an interim. Mm-hmm. Uh, Russ initially was interim. Right. Uh, but yeah, but the ones in the line, yeah. So I don't know. Boom may have a longer full name, maybe that we're just not privy to. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm that's what I'm wondering. Like, what's the formal name there? Right. Exactly. And then, you know, I guess a couple of the things uh, <laughs> that happened during our hiatus with the NFL draft, uh, where we established, I guess, two things. Uh, Stetson did get drafted, and we now have the Philadelphia Bulldogs. Yes, the the Philadelphia, what, the, the Georgia, Georgia Delphia Bull Eagles or Eagle Dogs <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I've got a I've got a buddy that went to Georgia Tech that's like a huge Eagles fan, and I the last two years I've just been texting him like during the draft, like dude, oh. like like what is going on here? <laughs> and he's always like, uh, he's like, you know, like I hate it, but I also love it because I'm not gonna lie, like they're all amazing players. <laughs> yeah, seriously, he's he's got he's gonna have to he's gonna have to become a a, a little bit of a Georgia fan, right? Yeah, obviously. Obviously. I mean, you know, I, I, I lived just outside of Philadelphia, uh, in my younger days, briefly. I don't really remember living there, but you know, they love to draft Georgia players and the Falcons clearly do not. So I'm not going to actually switch allegiances, but I do think it's funny to talk about. I mean, I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that we can thank you for, for all the good karma of bringing them to the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> It's, it's, it's all me through my friend and the fact that I lived there uh, when I was very young. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like the bigger, I don't know how big, a, big it was, but like with Stetson, like, you know, all the talk of, oh, he's going to sell insurance and all these things. I mean, he's going to be the backup in LA. I mean, unless they bring somebody else in, they don't even have anyone else in the roster last I checked. Or they definitely didn't have draft. Like it was just Stafford. Um, and like, let's face it, Stafford's getting up there. Um, I would, I'm not going to be shocked if, uh, we see Stetson in an actual, like, I'm not talking preseason, like in an actual game this year. I mean, if, if Stafford has to miss a snap, you know, we're going to see Stetson in there. Yeah, seriously. I don't know. Um, I mean, it's the likelihood is definitely higher. Let's just say that since he was drafted. Yeah. Um, so high, like everybody was thinking that he was going to be drafted in like the sixth round or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. There were some people that were, were surprised that he was drafted at all. So, I mean, how many fourth round quarterbacks get to play? I guess that that could be a dog stats post. <laughs> mm, yeah, that is a, that is a good question. Yeah, that that I don't I don't know. Um, but I don't know, man. Pretty cool to see him go out there in L.A. too. Uh, you know, he he clearly enjoys playing in that building. So. Yeah, seriously. Which I rewatched a little bit of that the other day. Um, remember that time when we went back to back? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a beat down. Um, did you see all right, and this is I'm going off the rails. Did you see the um the Greg Zanke comment today around Oh my uh, gosh. It was <laughs> so amazing. <laughs> 
<laughs> the biggest, the biggest like mic drop moment. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll I'll probably butcher this a little bit, but it was basically like someone was questioning like you know the SEC, the whole debate, right? Like eight game schedule versus nine game schedule, and and he was like, if you're insinuating that we're trying to avoid playing the best competition, he's like, uh, you know, all you have to do is look at the national championship game. Uh, it was 65 to seven. <laughs> so our conference isn't running from anyone. <laughs> so I'm sure I messed up. I'm not, that's not a quote paraphrasing, but he, he definitely dropped the 65 to seven in his answer, which was amazing. Yeah, he did. It, it was kind of like, uh, it kind of came out of nowhere. Like basically people were pressing him on like the sec, like scheduling tougher games or whatever. And it's like, I'm so, I'm sorry. <laughs> the games are, the games are more competitive in the sec than they are in the national championship game. <laughs> right. Right. Seriously. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. That was, that was a good one. So anyway, sorry, I digress. Um, <clears throat> I know we did want to talk about that a little bit. I guess the only other thing before we get, I know we've got a bunch of listener questions as well, but I think the only other thing was, you know, we're, we're not like a recruiting podcast. Um, and we've got people that do a much better job covering recruiting over at, over at Doc Central. Um, but when you sign the number one quarterback, not sign, sorry, when you get a commitment from the number one quarterback in the class, uh, that's a big deal. And especially we so talking about Dylan Raiola. And then obviously, you know, we already had a commitment in the same class uh, secured from Ryan. Ooh, and here we definitely need a Scott Howard pronunciation. I have no idea. Um, P- Puglisi, I believe. Uh, Ryan Puglisi. You know, to have two Elite 11 quarterbacks committed in the 2024 classes is pretty cool. Yeah. Um it's, uh, first, first off, let me let me let me let me back up. Is it is it Ry- It's Ryola, right? It is Ryola. Ryola, yeah, yes, um, yeah. I mean, he's he's what the second highest graded player to commit or sign commit slash sign to UGA in like in the, ever in the history of recruiting. So yeah, I don't who who was number one. I, I guess I guess that's that's probably a better question. Who was, who was number one? <laughs> I think it was John. John had mentioned that that stat to us, like that he was like he the did. second highest, second oh, like the, the second highest rated recruit that's ever committed to Georgia. So I I didn't think about it then, but now I'm like, well, who's number one? <laughs> yeah, but who's number one? <laughs> <laughs> it probably was like George Pickens or something like that. Or um, I mean, what other? I mean, who who else could it have been? Carry on. I'm going to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Um, uh, yeah, no, I mean, whenever you get the number one player in the country and the number one recruit, uh, quarterback, and he's a legacy from, um, uh, wasn't his, didn't his dad play at Nebraska or something like that? Yes. And like his uncle is an assistant coach there right now. Right. So you had all that going. Plus he was committed at some point to Ohio state, right? Yes. He also was. Yep. He was at Ohio state commit, then decommitted and now is committed to Georgia. Right, right, right. So I mean, all in all, you know, obviously we just we just smacked and laid the smack down on Ryan Day. So like, <laughs> it's it's just like another one of those like, oh, this commitment went wide left. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you? I don't know if you want me to answer the question. <laughs> it's someone we try not to talk about on the podcast anymore. There's my hint on who was the highest player that we ever signed. I see it in the text thread. I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna. I'm not gonna dignify it with a response. <laughs> uh, shout out Will Morrison, a new contributor at Dog Central, for answering our question. So we're not gonna talk about that, but I'm sure everyone knows who we're talking about. Yes. yes. <laughs> he he who shall not be named. <laughs> uh, amazing, amazing. All right. Um, so yeah. So the. The SEC, uh, <laughs> so the SEC meetings are going on, not the media days, because I'm going crazy. And I texted you. I was like, oh, it's SEC meetings. We need to record like after Kirby talks. And I was like, wait a minute. Sorry. I'm like fast forwarding in the future. That's in July. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Did I yeah, I, no, yeah, no, no. I do. I, yeah. I just got all like all discombobulated in my head. Um, Cause I, had, I remember I had seen like the schedule for the coaches and when they were talking but that's, you know, they, they really set like months out. So I was all messed up, but yeah. So the big, you know, the big, the big talk kind of heading in, um, this was this whole eight, eight versus nine games, um, you know, schedule format changing, 
not this year, but the following year with Texas and Oklahoma coming in. Um, you know, I still haven't seen, you know, we, we've seen coaches talking about it and, and all these kinds of things, but like, I'm curious to see if they even come up with an answer, like if they get it and I'll do my kind of like old man, get off my lawn moment briefly was like, I'm surprised that we've gotten to this point and we still haven't resolved this, like what the schedule is going to work, like how it's going to work. I feel like, uh, it just feels odd that this decision was made to bring more teams in, get to 16, and we don't know how we're going to operate. It just seems weird to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like it's almost like you've got uh, like like the other stuff that's going on right now in the world, right? You got like the, the politicians that are trying to figure out the whole debt the debt ceiling, and it's like, guys, it's. June 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 fifth is is like right around the corner, and we still haven't figured this out yet. Like, what is going <laughs> What is going on? Like, someone's something's got to something's got to give here, right? Right. Like, is and this is this is almost even worse because they've they've had months to figure this out, right? Yeah, yeah. You it, know, yeah, oh yeah, we're 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 gonna bring those guys in. What's the what's the schedule gonna look like? Oh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> it's, it's, almost, it's almost like they're trying to figure out how to record an po- uh, episode of My Got a Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll we'll just figure it out. <laughs> oh, man. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. <laughs> it's live. <laughs> oh, sorry. That hit a little too close to home. Um, <laughs> as I gathered myself. But no, yeah, like, like I don't know. I, I, my my Twitter joke was like, I feel like like Mike's live would have never done such a thing. Like, I don't know. I feel because like he was, I felt like like a visionary and like really changed college football and like you know when the SEC expanded and had the you know went to divisions and had the championship game and all those kind of things. I just feel like you come into something like this, you make such a huge move to bring in Texas Oklahoma and like you didn't have a plan or maybe you had a plan. Now people are blocking at it or something. So I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully they resolve it soon. Um, that's my thought. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that um, that they maybe thought that they could renegotiate with ESPN, and ESPN is in like financial turmoil right now. So like they're like, yeah, mm-hmm. you guys have a contract. Like, no, we don't. We don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that 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 could be it. There could have been like a handshake <laughs> kind of thing, and someone's going back on it. The Whether economics, the econo- the world economic situation uh, centered around literally pretty much everything right now is so is in such limbo that I'm sure that they're just kind of like, yeah, if you guys want to do nine games, that's fine with us, but we're 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 contracted for you know whatever, whatever it is they're contracted for. I don't know how it works if they were to just go ahead and add nine games and just not get compensated for it. I don't know. Right, because I mean the you know the way the TV rights works, like, you know, I guess it depends on how everything is worded, but like they're not increasing the total number of games, right? It's in, in theory, it, it increases the quality of the games. Um, that you've got some more marquee matchups in theory. Um, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully they get it figured out soon. Um, what's your preference? Okay. So let's, let's, let, let's hit the list of questions. That's actually our first question. So, okay. uh, Brett building checking in. Um, we'll start with that one. He had a non, a non, uh, football question, but his first one was, what do you prefer the one, seven format with eight games or the three, six format with nine games? So just to, yeah, let's, I was about to say, let's, let's do a little explainer. Yeah. Explain so, it to me like I'm five. <laughs> okay. So let's start with the one, seven. <laughs> so it would be eight games, uh, the one means that every everyone would have one permanent opponent. Okay. Mm, mm-hmm. So the first thing is with both of these models, divisions are gone. No divisions, right? So it's going to be like the teams, with the, the two teams with the best record go to the SEC championship game. There will be no more East versus West champion kind of thing. No divisions mm. at all. In, so, in, both, in both scenarios? Correct. In both scenarios, that's how it's going to be. Mm. Um, so the first scenario is eight games, one seven, one permanent opponent, um, one permanent opponent, uh, and then like seven rotating, right? So you think, so like Georgia and Florida would be permanent opponents, one would assume, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, you'll have Alabama and Auburn, right? Like just all the natural ones, Mississippi, Mississippi State. Like those are going to be your permanent. So those games will happen every year, and then you'll play seven other games, but you're going to go through some sort of rotation. Um, you'll have like, you know, <clears throat> um, like three teams roll off four on, right? Every other year. And the the benefit of that model and the other model, they're both set up so that in a 16-team league, every player, if you're, you assume you're in school for four years, you get to play 
uh, every team at your home stadium and at their stadium. Okay. Okay. So then the, the other one, if you go to nine games, is the three six. So same thing. Every team would have three permanent opponents that they'd play every year. And then you'd and then you'd have six opponents that would be, you know, changing every year. So again, you'd I think you'd have like three roll on, three roll off, you're alternating, right? But then they're not like it wouldn't be like like pods. So it would be like, I'm gonna make things up again. So like Georgia, you know, Georgia's permanent opponents, I would say would probably be again, you know, Florida, Auburn, um, a lot of people have speculated South Carolina, right? Um, but you don't like group those four teams together and they all play each other. Like Auburn would have Georgia as a permanent, Alabama as a permanent, and then I don't know, LSU, right? So like you go through that. Everyone would have three teams that they play every year. You're alternating home and home. And then you have these six, you'd rotate through the remaining schools um, as those six other opponents. So <clears throat> that one, but then there's nine conference games, right? So you play a nine game conference schedule, and then you'd have three non-conference games. With the eight game conference schedule with a one permanent opponent, you you still get to keep your four non conference games. Um, is is in this scenario? Are, are these the only two scenarios that are really being considered? So that's a great question. And uh, so something that Graham Coffee actually threw out was he had caught some wind of. He posted this on Doug, Doug Central. He had caught wind of actually having a three five model where you would uh, have three keep the three permanent opponents and then have five teams that rotated in and off the schedule um, with for eight games. He had heard some wind of that. I feel like that would be really hard to make the schedule. You remember John, like last summer I was obsessed with trying to come up with a model um, <laughs> for, for the three, six, cause I was convinced it was going to happen. Dude, it is not easy. Um, and I, like the one seven and the three, six are, are cleaner um, for making a schedule model. I feel like the three, five would be kind of nasty. I'm sure someone could figure it out. Um, I mean, you know, if these are the if these are the only two options, I mean, three six sounds like the it would probably be a better setup for the fans, yeah. So that we maintain the rivals. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but like if you go to one seven, that means that you can only protect Auburn, Georgia, basically. And then so like there could be years that we don't play Florida, for example. Is that is that what? Yeah, I'm and it's, it would probably be it's going to be the opposite, right? Because they're not because they're going to play Auburn, Alabama every year. Right, so we're not going to uh, play Alabama or Auburn every year anymore. So, Georgia, uh, Florida, I hate, I hate everything. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So that's my again back to my like my get off the lawn mo- my, my lawn moment is like, what are we even doing? Like, we're adding these teams, you know, Texas and Oklahoma, and yeah. then we're coming with this model where Georgia and Auburn can't play every year anymore. I mean, we're gonna you're going to lose Georgia Auburn. You might lose Alabama Tennessee. Like these like huge historic rivalries that you know, we're so accustomed to, I mean, if you go to the one seven, you are losing our, um, Alabama. Tennessee. I mean, I mean how do you, losing, so how, how do you, how, how can we even be considered? Like, this isn't even really a conversation. Like it's three, six. Like if these are the only two options, it has to be three, six to, yeah, preserve, so to preserve even a remote semblance of what makes the sec, the sec. Exactly. So that's how I feel. I think it's the, some of the schools like there's like the Kentuckys are, they're worried about bowl eligibility and not being able to make bowl eligibility. I'm picking on Kentucky. I've heard that they are one of the teams that support one seven. Um, there and then there's some be. other reasons about like, you know, you might lose some of the marquee non-conference games. So like, is Georgia going to still I, I, schedule I don't, I don't, I don't care. Oregon? I don't, I don't yeah. care. No, I agree. Like I, I would I don't care. like you're, you're in theory, you're getting that now by playing Oklahoma and Texas every other year, right? Where we weren't playing them before. Yeah, I mean, like we get we get to play <laughs> we get to play like actual games that matter, as, as opposed to pretend games and neutral site games. And like, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I mean, how much money are we? I mean, kind of like the Georgia Florida game, right? Like, there's I guess that mm-hmm. they make it so financially beneficial for us to have that. Mm-hmm. So even in the nine game, even in the nine game setup, well, I guess you 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 would be de incentivized from. You'd be de-incentivized from scheduling those games, I guess. Is that yeah. is that kind of the thinking? From scheduling which games? Sorry, for like the from, non-conference from, games. From scheduling a like Chick Fil A kickoff type game yeah, with, right, with right. Oregon. With Oregon, like so, if you have to play nine conference games with Oklahoma and Texas, yep. sprinkled sprinkled in the 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 
a, appeal of scheduling another opponent like an Oregon or like an Ohio State just becomes that much more like, yeah, no thanks. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that's the fear. That so the, for the people that are kind of pumped the brakes on nine get on nine games, that's kind of their point there. So I think there's an argument to be made either way. Like I can see where folks are coming from, but for me, it's got to be three. I mean, again, you have my to thoughts. Are, tradition. There has to be a tradition. Exactly. Preserved. Like you yep. have to figure out some way to keep the things that make SEC football special and college football in general special. But like really, like I'm at the point now where it's like you know screw everyone else. I only care about what's going on in the SEC. Like, mm-hmm. screw it. Like, like, you guys do whatever the hell you want to do. Like, we're going to just do what the SEC does that makes us unique and special. Because, frankly, yeah. it seems like everyone else is willing to abandon all of their traditions to come to the SEC. Like, think about, like, the tex- Texas and Oklahoma. Like, they, mm-hmm. like, what? Yeah. I got, yeah, I get, like, you know, we get to go back to the Texas A&M Texas game and Texas mm-hmm. and Oklahoma, you know, theoretically would, would be able to preserve some of their stuff, but like Oklahoma state, Oklahoma, that's mm-hmm. gone. Yeah. Um, I don't know what other, what other big rivalries did Texas have in the, in the big 12 or whatever? Like was, was Texas tech like a big thing, a big rivalry for them or TCU or. Yeah. I mean, uh, Texas tech, I believe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. See, this is where, like, I don't know. Why are they even in the SEC? I don't, Sorry. I don't even care. Contract. I don't even, I don't My answer is care. contract. Go back to 12 teams. <laughs> kick somebody out. <laughs> kick, out, <laughs> kick out. Yeah, let's kick out Vanderbilt and Kentucky and all of our problems are solved. Missouri. No, kick out oh, Missouri. 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 They're Sorry, in the Midwest. Sorry, They're in the Missouri. Midwest. Okay, kick sorry. Out, no, kick out Missouri and, and Vandy. Uh, all right. Brett, hopefully that sufficed. Uh, he did say, do you have a favorite new bourbon you've tried since January? Hmm. I'm going to say Blanton's because I've tried, I had Blanton's for the first time after January. So that's totally cheating, but it's true. <laughs> I haven't actually, I don't know. I don't know that I've had any new bourbons lately. Like uh, most of the stuff that I've been drinking lately has been stuff that I've had, or I guess, I guess I could, I could say my infinity bottle because <laughs> that, that changes Fair all enough. the time. Uh, I will say that I just recently tried, they were out of the proof cocktails. Um, I went, I had some, mm. uh, had a, uh, Memorial Day cookout with a neighbor, and um, they were out of proof uh, old fashioned stuff. Which, if you're if you're familiar with the, these things, um, proof is is a like syrup or whatever that has like all the all the fixins for an old fashioned. All you have to do is add the bourbon, basically. John mm-hmm. John Tweet Sports got me in on this. Um, fantastic product. Um, they were out of it at the liquor store, so I tried the Woodford Reserve version. Mm. Uh, which was cheaper and it was also very good. So um, nice. that, that was, that was a nice cocktail that I had <laughs> recently. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Cool. Cool. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, next up Lamar Lovelace, uh, host of the 100 Sanford podcast. Uh, one of our fellow podcasts over at dog central, make sure to go check them out. If you have not yet, that beautiful, um, beautiful man, Lamar. That's right. He's got the, he's got the voice. <laughs> Everything going. The voice um, of an angel, the beard of a god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. At what point, if any, will fans stop hating on George's recent success and just recognize the great players that made it happen? <sighs> Never. Yeah, I mean, no, like, if I, it I don't think like our fans or opposing fans, just like, like in general. Fans. So it's the whole the excuses thing, right? So like, my quick thing is like I. I thought it was going to go away once we beat Alabama, right? It was like, we got to get over the hump and we have to beat Alabama. And then everyone mm-hmm. just accepted Georgia is good, right? Mm-hmm. But, but then it's, oh, well, Mechie and Williams are hurt, right? And mm-hmm. then now it's, yeah. oh, uh, Marvin, Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison right? was hurt, yeah. Right? So like all yeah. these things. Like what do we have to do <laughs> to just to be like, yeah, Georgia's really good? My favorite, my favorite thing recently was uh, – that one of the Ohio State people said that they virtually they virtually beat Georgia. <laughs> that was on like message board geniuses, right? Uh, yes, that was great. They virtually great. beat Georgia. So I guess that's that's probably the thing. Like I guess I guess that what will what will shut people up is if we go out and just batter batter someone that's like a a 2019 LSU team <laughs> with, <laughs> with with all of their weapons with all of their everything and we do it despite any injuries on our side because no one ever cares about that right um 
right. no one cares. No one cares about the anything that we have that's ham, hamstringing us. So, like, basically, we just have to beat a a fully healthy 2019 LSU, and and then people will say, okay, fine, you're good. Yeah. No. Nope. But even I then, think- I feel like they wouldn't. Even then, I feel like they would just. I don't know. They'd be like, "Oh, Bullcook Curly, Bullcook Bull Kirby got lucky again." Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. So yeah, it may because then, then, then it'll be never because then it'll be <laughs> then it'll be you you won you won it with uh, Carson Beck throwing for two hundred yards and he didn't throw for five hundred. You know what I mean? It'll be some right. some, some stupid right. like that. Right. You've got to win like the way that folks want you to. Yeah. Sorry, Carter. Sorry, Carter. Fair enough. All right. Yeah, and I. I agree. Um, let's see. Bubby, D- Bubby Dean. Is it an open invitation to the college football gods to smite Georgia, uh, to smite the Georgia program for dog fans to prematurely boast about hashtag dogs 23 Pete? I feel like this was a, a word salad to say that he's munsoning about dogs three, three Pete. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that munsoning is dead. Okay, I think that's fair. Yeah, I think he's saying like, can we go ahead and talk about it, or is that bad? And no, yeah. I think we can absolutely talk about it because like you look at the schedule, and we have good reason to think about it. Yeah. Yep. Um, the schedule itself is reason enough because, as we've shown, that you know, <laughs> all we have to do is make it to the playoff, and you look at that schedule, and it's like, well, where's the loss? And even if there is a loss, like, how could you? I don't. I don't know that there's a team in the country that you could keep out even. If you had one loss. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. Let's see. 51 to seven GTA. Um, with it, with it being the off season, is there one vacation spot you would like to visit that you've not been to yet? He said for him, it's Fenway park. You got a spot. Like, like vac- I mean, Fenway park feels like a really random vacation spot, but I, I agree. Mean, I agree. To, but I think it could to, be anywhere to, to each his own. Yeah. If it's anywhere for me, it's going to be the, the British Isles. I'd, I'd like to, swing by and visit old British bulldog and sleep on his couch mm. for a few days and then, um, head, head, head down South to, to other, to other venues <laughs> along the bitter styles like Ireland, Scott, obviously Scotland, but Scotland, Ireland. And then, um, I would, I guess in the same vein as, as your Fenway park, I'll tell you old Trafford, uh, Manchester United, is like a bucket list item for me at some point in the future to go and see a game at Manchester United. Yeah. Yeah. On the, on the sports front, like I have a bucket list wish list to basically go to the tennis grand slam tournaments. And I have been to zero of them uh, Mm. to this point, but so, you know, Wimbledon, uh, somewhere I've always wanted to go to Logan Booker, cover your ears. Logan hates Wimbledon. Um, but why yeah, did, I would, wait, what? how does he yeah, hate Wimbledon but love the Masters? I don't he, understand. He doesn't like he doesn't like breakfast at Wimbledon. I don't know. He's like he's like offended by it. He doesn't um, like he doesn't like a, a full English. Is that what he is that what it is or what's the breakfast no, at Wimbledon? I don't. They just say that. They say breakfast at Wimbledon. I don't know. That's always it's the same. You never heard breakfast at Wimbledon? <laughs> I don't know that I've ever heard him say that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's what the people say. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> yeah, like on Championship Sunday, you have breakfast at Wimbledon. <laughs> I've always heard that. But like, what does what does he hate about it? I don't understand. Like, oh, what does Logan hate about that? I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. just like I'm just like qu- quoting. I, there was a recent uh, second string uh, rant about it. Oh my <laughs> god! Super random for this time of the year. But wait, wait, is he talking about the strawberries and cream or like? Oh, yeah. Confused. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, think so. I see. I see. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Fine. That's that's a little weird, but I feel like it's kind of like the pimento cheese for the masters. Like, fair people yeah. people outside of people that don't understand it are probably like, what the hell are you talking about? This cheese sandwich. Like what, like what, what are these weird rednecks? Like what are they, <laughs> what, are they, what in, in right. my finest, in my finest British voice, like, what do you want about? You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, amazing. So yeah, so I guess that'd be mine. Um, all right, let's hit this one quick. Cause I think we have the same opinion. Uniform Twitter also from 51 to seven GTA. Someone has to ask it. Will we see black jerseys in 2023? He says, no. What do you say, John? Uh, is Kirby Smart still the head coach? Just checking. He is. No. Agreed. No. No black jerseys. Um, all right. Friend of the show, Tim Riley, uh, which I was just texting with Tim the other day. Uh, but he anyways. just moved back. He's He has a new moniker. He's no longer miserable in Minnesota, at least not yet. I don't know. 
when he closes, but he's moving back to Georgia. He is. That is correct. Uh, I expect miserable. to see he's going to be miserable and coming. Expect to see. Like expect, <laughs> to, expect to see uh, Tim at some tailgates in the fall. Welcome back, Tim. Um, what is your favorite saltwater beach to visit, and why? And he said, typically, controversy between Atlantic and Gulf uh, Gulf beach goers. Yeah, you- yeah, I would say that there's there's big controversy. I'm super torn on this one because I enjoy the Gulf more like as a beach. Mm-hmm. Um, like it, like when I think of, when I think of going to the beach, I think of the Gulf. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do enjoy the amenities and all of the things that are encapsulated in going to Hilton Head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hate, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the water at Hilton Head. I'm not a huge fan of like, the sand just is kind of depressing, but like, at least it doesn't stick to you kind of thing. Like there's pros and cons <laughs> of both. Um, I, yes. I also feel like I have to lug my crap, like, like it's way long, way further when I go to Hilton head, you know what I mean? So mm. Mm. you got to get the, uh, the Shibumi shade, John. The Shibumi <laughs> shade. <laughs> I don't, well, when I, when I, when I say I lug all my crap, I don't even take, I don't even take like a, a massive, a massive tailgate tent. I, I've tried that a couple a couple of times and yeah. I, gave, I gave up on it. But All I Shibumi, gotta say is the, the Shibumi, Shibumi shade. shade. It yeah. changed my life. Not a sponsor yet. Yeah, I was about to say we need to <laughs> we need to get a sponsorship for that because that thing's like four hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive. Um, I I mean I guess I got I gotta say I gotta say Frip right, and that's where we go all the time. Uh, but I, yeah, I mean I agree with like I mean I haven't been to the golf in a while but I do like I do like going to I mean I don't know why you would you got a free place to stay at Frip shout out shout out Frip Dog shout out shout out to Frip Dog yeah Uh, I will tell you I will tell you this Jim there's no there's not going to be very many Kube uh, uh, contests um, (laughs) at at, at the golf because Mm. your 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 Atlantic situation sets up way nicer for Kube That's true. You got the, you got the right sand for it, for the cube. That's that's true. That's true. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, or then he had a football, actual football question. Uh, who will have more touchdowns in September? Brock Bowers, Lad McConkey, Ra, Ra Thomas, or Dominic Lovett? I'm going to go with Bowers. I'm going to be boring. I'm going to go with Bowers too. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's not boring if it's smart. Like, no, that's true. That's true. (laughs) That's true. Um, all right. Bobby Wilson with all of the things that we said probably could have been an episode. Uh, so Bobby Wilson said, since it's off season, uh, I would like to hear some good bourbon and golf discussions. Yeah. So he said, uh, top five best bourbons and what makes them the best. Mm. Uh, and then he said for golf, favorite golf courses and why ever had a hole in one. If so, give the details. That was about, that was a lot. We can run through these. So what's your, uh, Actually, we can start with this one. Have you ever had a hole in one? I've never had a hole in one. Okay. Uh, I'm not a huge golfer, but uh, I've never had a hole in one. Okay. So I've had one, one hole in Ooh, one. Nice. It was on Fripp Island. I was with my dad. We were playing just the two of us. Uh, beautiful uh, par three over like the water. It was on the ocean course. It's like the ocean is out to your left. But then there's you're also hitting over water from like one of the lagoons or whatever. So hit it. Didn't even I didn't even know that it went in. So <laughs> I hit it and it was a great shot, but it like it was rolling and then it it stopped. And I had I had hit second. Um so my dad and I hopped in the golf cart and drove around. We pulled to the green. We're getting close to the green. And I said, looked at my dad and I said, Where's my ball? I said, I don't see my ball. And he kind of joked, was like, well, maybe it went in the hole. And I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, it probably rolled off the green and is in the you know, in the lagoon. Whatever. And then he's like, I don't know. He was like, that was a really good shot. He's like, there's no way that they did. He's like, I, I really think it might've gone a hole. So we like get to the green, we park, we slowly walk up to the hole. And I looked in the hole, ball was in the hole. And so, you know how I am. Like I like absolutely flipped out, like threw my hat in the hair, running around. I'd made snow angels on the green. <laughs> and then like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like freaking out. And then, um, like we're like celebrating or whatever. And these people like pull up in a golf cart and they're like, do you have a hole in one? I was like, yeah. And they're like, we couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. Cause you were celebrating like on the green, like not at the tee box. And someone was like, well, maybe he just made a long birdie putt. He was like, that guy was making <laughs> snow angels. That was a hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was doing snow angels. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, so that's my story. So I was with my dad. It was pretty cool. 
Did you, get anything, did you get anything to commemorate it or? So I've got the scorecard, I've got the ball and I've got a, my dad, a picture of my dad and I, and then also like, so the people that were behind us that came to talk to us, they all, we, they all posed for a picture too. So we've got like that whole group. Uh, and then I've got the ball and the scorecard. So I, w- I just haven't done it yet, but I've got it all in the spot. I want to do like a shadow box with the scorecard and then the, uh, the ball. That's awesome. Actually, this, also, the scorecard flew out of our golf cart when we drove away, and the people behind us picked it up oh. and like brought it to us later. And they they wrote on it they wrote on it um, something about like you know beers on you at the clubhouse, which was so. <laughs> as 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 is the tradition, right? Or yes, yes, that's a thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Was it, a par, was it a par three? Yeah, 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 yeah par three. Yeah. It was a short par three. Like it wasn't long. It was not a long shot, but it was, it was like tee boxes were like right up on the water. So it was like all water. You've got to clear the water kind of deal, was which from, I usually choke. In was, that it from, was it from the tips? <laughs> no, 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 We were not playing for tips. Okay. I played a hole from the, uh, like a single hole from the tips last time I was down there, but no, I'm not that good. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's, that's a good story. That's a good story. I, I, I expect that Bobby is 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 entertained. <laughs> are you, aren't you not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> are you not entertained? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, let's see. Do you have what is your or wait? What was your favorite golf course though? I think you have a favorite golf course. Maybe. Uh, oh, the golf course. Yes, the Masters. I mean, I did get, I did get to go to the Masters um, this this spring. Um, that was that was definitely a solid experience. I guess it, maybe I, I imagine Bobby's probably you know thinking of it from a um, you know like actual golf situation because mine was like a full experience, right, with all the mm, right. and the you know the, the the taste of the Masters and such. Right. Um, yeah, Have I mean, you ever been before? Was that your first time? That was my first time. I've never okay, been. It was it was it was a great experience. I guess. Um, so the masters was, was, was amazing. Right. So, you know, you got everything. It it, definitely was everything that it was built to be, but I do think that the weather impacted some of the, some of the beauty, I guess, that like would, would typically have been there. I feel like, cause it would have been so cold in in Georgia, like Mm. all of our bushes here. I know you're, I know not everybody is, is, is local here to the central, (laughs) central Georgia area or whatever, but like, I don't know. Like when it when it froze when there was a hard freeze here not too long before the masters or whatever but like all the leaves like fell off of everything mm, yeah, yeah and like all the bushes and everything was just so impacted but like the like everything about the masters was everything that everybody talked about it just wasn't quite as colorful I feel like but gotcha I could I could have just been me being a pessimist about the the weather but um. <laughs> But the the Masters was great. Everything was everything was perfect. Like everything was immaculate, and yeah, it was everything that everybody always talked about. So that'd be the Masters. Um, I would say so. Other other Tory Pines would be another one that I've that I've watched and seen. Another one that I've been to um, is Oakmont Oakmont Country Club up in uh, Pittsburgh. Mm. I had the pleasure of being there, and it was very similar like a little bit different than the masters but um it was very similar to the masters in that it was such an old traditional thing it's like the oldest golf club in the country or something like that mm. um but yeah those those are some of my top my top courses pebble beach pebble beach would be another one because you know i've never been i've never been to pebble beach but i've seen the pictures but like playing um <laughs> what was I'm trying to think of what the golf game was that I played on the computer, and I, it was always at Torrey Pines and Pebble Beach. Like those were like the. Right. It's kind of like it's kind of like people back in the day used to be like, yeah, my favorite team is Notre Dame because they were on the TV, and like mm-hmm. that was, like, that was yeah. my favorite course because that's what I always played on the like MS Golf or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, not even on like Golden Tee or something. <laughs> oh. Uh, Amazing. I mean, obviously we played Golden Tee, but I'm just saying, like when I was a kid, gotcha, I would always, gotcha, gotcha. I would always play that that CD. You know, you you pop yeah, the yeah, CD yeah. in the game or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I know what you want. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, I guess for me, I, I I just haven't been to as many. Um. So like, as far as what I've been to, I guess I would say same place uh, where Greg and I saw uh, Kirby speak. So Quail Hollow. So the Wells Fargo Championships, like Quail Hollow every year here mm. in Charlotte. 
Um, it's a cool course. It's a nice course. 18 is beautiful with like a little Creek run through it right up at the end. Um, but so I've been to Wells Fargo several times and then PGA championship was there a few years back and went there. So that's, that's another one. Uh, I definitely enjoy that as well. So I guess I could also throw in, um, Bear, Bear Lakes country club, which is where my grandfather had a membership to. And mm-hmm. I, that, that's where I was like, I learned how to play golf at Bear Lakes Country Club in West Palm Beach. Cool. Nice. Nice. Um, how long how long will it take us to come up with top five bur- best bourbons? <laughs> I'll make it I'll make it really easy for you. It's Weller okay. for me. I could pretty much m- maneuver them any which way, but I'd probably go with uh Weller twelve would be my favorite bourbon. Uh, Weller one oh seven, foolproof. Um and then I would put special reserve on there as well. Those are my favorites because they're weeded and mm. they're they're super smooth. Um, like in that, when you take a drink of when you take a drink, it doesn't burn. Like yeah. I mean, there are probably some folks that are out there like ah, oh, Wellers are just like you know, bleh, or tater bourbon or whatever. Because um, mm. there's, oh, there's definitely a subset of bourbon folks that are out there that are like, oh, I'm a George T. Stag or I'm a uh, what's another one like like um stag junior or whatever where the the yeah. bur- like the, the proof on these like east um Elijah Craig barrel proof like these things are like uh, like 130 proof 120 something proof and like gotcha. for me like in order to i mean it's just me I'm, I'm maybe I'm just a wuss but like <laughs> in order in order for me to enjoy those I'd have to let them marinate in some ice for a while you know what i mean so yeah uh, and I've heard that, like, that's like, uh, actually the, the liquor store over by my house, they, they just have a, they have a private, they have a private barrel for Elijah Craig, which those are usually pretty good. And I saw the proof on it. It was like 127 proof. And I was like, Oh, hmm. and he goes, and he did tell me, he's like, yeah, it's kind of hot. It's kind of spicy. You have to kind of let it mellow and some ice and it takes, it, it changes everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But okay. like for me, like the Weller, the Weller lineup is, is a fantastic line. I haven't had some of them. I, th- I, uh, I don't think I, I, I've not had William LaRue Weller. I've heard that's really good. Um, I've not had the CYPB or whatever it is, the white one. I've not had that. Um, I've not heard fantastic things about that one. I have not had single barrel. Um, also haven't heard it like super, super fantastic, but like basically everybody's always looking for, uh, Weller 12 foolproof and 107. And 107 to me is like, it's just, it's just a fantastic burp, complete bourbon. If I could find it every day, like that would be like an everyday drinker for me. Yeah. Yeah. Cannot, cannot find such things. Yeah. No, you can't find hardly anything. Although I know he's, he's probably listening. Uh, but Jordan, I know I'm going to get the Weller 12 from you. <laughs> nice. I know, <laughs> I know Bobby's got, Bobby's got Bland's in that, in his, in his top five. I mean, Blanton's, I think, uh, if I, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, Blanton's is 90 proof, right? So like, wh- that's like a, a Weller special reserve. Like the, the Weller green label is, is 90 proof. So gotcha. pretty close, pretty close there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think like what, uh, what else outside of the, the Weller lineup and obviously like Pappy is, is kind of, I mean, I frankly think that Weller 12 is better than Pappy. Um, cause I've had, I haven't had. I haven't had the 15 year. The 10 year was really good and it was re- pretty close to Pap, uh, to the Weller 12, but I always, I think, I actually think the Weller 12 is better, but that's just my opinion. Gotcha. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other, some of the other bourbons that I've had. I mean, I, <laughs> I I'm super boring because I find, <laughs> I find like what I like. And once I find that and I figure out how to get it, it's because like a lot of the stuff that you like, you can't, you can't really get. Yeah, especially especially, especially for you being an NBC. Yeah. So like yeah. once you find what you like, um, you know, it's it's hard it's hard to like change because you're like if you're like me, like you're looking at some of those price points on some of those bourbons out there, and it's like, oh yeah, like I'd love to try some of these, you know, newfangled bourbons that they have out there with that are like marinated and all these different casts and stuff, but they're like a hundred dollars. And I'm like, well, I've got old granddad 114 for 30 bucks right here. And that's right. a fantastic bourbon. Well, and then there's that one, remember that one that I brought to, I brought to Georgia. It was like, the, it was like, it was like a, some sort of uh like wine cask finish. And like, I was I'm like, you know, it wasn't like, the, it wasn't like a hundred bucks or anything. The Jefferson's Reserve. Yeah. 
yeah and it was like i didn't i didn't enjoy it and it was like and then i you know like i don't know so you feel yeah, like it was a huge waste yeah exactly well but what i will say about that is is like as you try bourbon as you sample it and you, you try all the different finishes and all this and all this nonsense that's kind of out there right now i say nonsense but like you know all these experimentations that that people are doing it's like the i think yours was um oh what was it it was the pritchard uh, is it yeah pritchard something pritchard something or other yeah it was yeah. like marinated in like wine casks so like yeah. for you you probably are going to look at the next bourbon that's marinated in in red wine or cabernet casks and you'll probably be like eh, i didn't right. like that last time so i'm not going to try that again and that's yep. probably true it's probably totally fair yeah. So like for me, like I've had stuff that's marinated in anything marinated in wine casks. I pretty much like, like red wine. Like I, I'll pretty much just cut it out. Gotcha. Uh, anything that's in tequila barrels. I, I can't do tequila and bourbon, man. I don't know who, uh, if, if you could do that, man, more power to you. <laughs> but like, like the sherry cask and, you know, sherry and, um, uh, what's another one? Uh, port port barrel like mm -hmm. the like the angel's envy yeah um those types of bourbons that are finished and the things like that that are those are fantastic for me so like for me like i would say like in angel's envy and i actually uh came across a angel's envy store pick when i was in um when i was in um hilton head recently i'd never seen that before um but it was very expensive <laughs> i yeah. was not comfortable with the price point but um, anything that's anything port, port, port barrel finished, I would, I would highly recommend for anyone. Cause I haven't had anybody tell me that it was not good. Got it. Got it. Nice. Nice. Uh, let's see. Bobby did have a football question. How good will Brock Bowers be this season? Are we talking like Heisman type season? <sighs> I think it's gonna be tough for a tight end to win the Heisman. I'll say that now. It's going to be, it's gonna be yeah. tough. It's going to be tough. Like I would say that, um, you remember you remember um you remember Leonard Pope? Mm -hmm. Like he had one of those seasons that was like I, I feel like that if, uh, Brock Bowers has shown that he's way more way more versatile. <laughs> yeah. So I can, I think it ultimately is just going to depend on how much they give him the ball. And you know, yeah. he's got all these weapons. Like I'll be honest, I'm I'm not convinced that Ra Ra Thomas is is the answer based on Mm -hmm. The fact that he just have we haven't seen him right, and he's yeah. been in the dog doghouse. So like, I don't know if Ra Ra is really going to be have an opportunity this year. Yeah. Dominic Lovett looks like looks legit as advertised. So like, yeah. if you have these wide receivers that are able to produce the way that they produce, Brock's chances of shining are probably going to be lower this year than than in years past because we have so many weapons that are around him. I don't know, man. I mean, he's been so he's been so dynamic. You know, do, people are going to put a lot of attention on him but again like people have tried to put focus on him in, in the past and they haven't been able to stop him so i don't know i think part of it too is like let's be honest like you know he's not being delivered the mail anymore from the mailman so part of this <laughs> is on carson back too so we gotta watch through that but that's true everybody has their favorite receivers right so like um yeah. what is it what uh like lad lad mcconkey kind of came into his own because wasn't it like Stetson was kind of thrown to lad for a while or no? Um, good question. Like, was he thrown to him as a backup? I can't remember. Like when he mm. was doing, when he was doing backup duty. Could have been. I feel like, I feel like that was right. Anyway, like let's say, you know, Carson Beck has a good relationship with uh, Dominic Lovett, say, yeah. and then all of a sudden, like he's just his go-to guy because they just vibe together. Right. 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 They, they vibe they vibe, Jim, as the kids say. <laughs> I like it. So I don't know. All I have to say, I expect, I expect, you know, I expect Brock Bowers to be doing Brock Bowers things. That includes end arounds for touchdowns. I mean, you know, like just give the guy the ball. And I think he'll still do that. I think Heisman's probably lofty, but a lot of that's a function of the fact that it's a quarter record. So. I, you know, we we probably wouldn't do that question justice if we didn't mention the fact that um, we had Darnell Washington doing Darnell Washington things as a tight end. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he was an extra blocker. So, like, that void is not there. So, are we going to be asking Brock Bowers to do more blocking this year than he did last year, you know, or in years yeah. past? Yep. Yeah. How many, like, yeah, are we going to have as many two tight ends as we had in the past? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, we'll see. 
that's gonna be something interesting to watch come fall for sure mm-hmm. all right uh let's see Frip dog my dad checks in <laughs> what was your favorite pour at the lake from the bourbon in a box bar if you know you know uh my dad had this like cardboard box with bourbon bottle bottles in it we were at mm. at the lake with them for memorial day weekend uh i'm gonna go with eagle rare was my favorite pour mm. uh as far as on the rocks goes uh, but I did have a Kentucky mule that I made with maker's mark. That was excellent. Uh, but as far as like straight bourbons, uh, I'm going to go with the Eagle rare was my favorite dad. Regular, regular old maker's mark, or is it the, the, my God, a podcast special. It maker's was not, 46. it was not maker's 46. It was, uh, <laughs> standard maker's mark, uh, with ginger beer and lime, uh, it was excellent. Nice. Um, <laughs> Then he said, uh, with the cheeseburger debate this weekend, <laughs> can we make do we, cheese? Do, do, we, do we need to update the people on the cheeseburger we'll, debate? We'll, uh, we'll fill them in. Uh, can we make cheeseburger in paradise the unofficial theme song of the summer? Uh, some lyrics could trigger certain debaters. So two thirds, two Thank thirds you, of the Smith of the Smith brothers. Uh, so John Smith, AKA John tweets sports, uh, and his brother, Daniel were on the timeline, like trashing ketchup and lettuce on cheeseburgers on hamburgers yeah. in general. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Michael, I feel like was appalled like we were, uh, yeah. so I want to call this only two thirds <laughs> of the Smith brothers. Uh, I had never heard such a thing. Like, yeah, like I want it, it, John's out here saying the ketchup is an overrated condiment. Uh, yes. so I don't know. Let everyone has to let us know if there are other people that feel like this this way about ketchup. Like oh, the floor. ketchup, the ketchup slander will not stand. I will not stand for the ketchup <laughs> slander. Mostly because as a kid growing up, like that's like literally the only condiment I ever really used was ketchup. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, all right. So here's so here's what I think. I'm going to give them a little bit of grace. So here's my th- here's my theory, and maybe they can correct me. Uh, so ketchup has this like like uh stigma of being um like it basically like de- detects from all the other flavors so if ketchup mm. is detected on your tongue like you can't taste anything else the other that's, why, like, okay. that's why people that's why people made fun of trump when he said that he liked his steak with ketchup or something like that it's like mm-hmm. uh, you know any steak you eat is going to be completely like ruined quote unquote with with ketchup but i feel like right. it's kind of i mean like john correct me if i'm wrong but like people is is that sorry is that munson barking i feel like there's a lot of rustling going on on your side yeah no, i think it was my chair squeaking sorry oh, i'm gonna try to sit still oh you're fine <laughs> I, I feel like that like it's kind of like bourbon right like you've got a ton of a ton of people that like to have it with ice. You have people that like to have it neat. You have people that like to have it in a, um, a Glencairn glass. Um, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, there's, there's folks that will judge you if you have it in a plastic cup. So like there's, it doesn't change anything about the bourbon and just is that it, you, you like it how you like it. And that's kind of how I feel about burgers. Like a burger, you can eat it any which way. There's people that will like, curse you up and down for putting ketchup on a hot dog, particularly those from Chicago. Right. Yes. I've seen I, that too. I will absolutely eat. I mean, frankly, that's, I mean, we had, we had hot dogs today for lunch. I, I cooked the kids hot dogs for lunch and every single one of them put hot ketchup on the hot dog as, as did I. And I, so, I put them both. And the key that I learned from uh, Jeff Dantzler and David Johnston is you put the mustard on first and then you put the ketchup over the mustard because dogs on top, red over yellow, Georgia over Georgia Tech. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you've mentioned that in the past too. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so like in, in my opinion, I think that, I mean, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll put ketchup on, uh, on just about anything. I'll put ketchup on anything. Like, uh, my, wise dog may, may, may clutch his pearls, but when I go to waffle house, like I may cut up my omelet and, you know, mix up the hash browns and throw some ketchup on everything and just call it a day. You know uh, I mean? Yeah. I'm not opposed to that. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand the ketchup slander. So yeah. So that's the what ketchup. that was. Yeah. Seriously. 
But yeah, uh, and hey, some people even put pickles on their hamburgers. Sorry, John. I was about to say. I was about about to say that now. Now you go, you slide down and talk about relish and pickles. Like you're going (laughs) to completely ruin. You're going to completely ruin everything for a lot of people. And I will tell you, I meant I made this comment on Twitter, and I was surprised by the backup that I got. I was actually very, very pleasantly surprised about that. (laughs) Oh, I did see that. Yeah, I just let it go. I just let that slide. I don't even think I got engaged, but I did see it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some other people. I, I was going to let you have your moment. There's only a handful. There's only a handful of situations where I've had a positive pickle experience, and I'll give <laughs> and I'll tell you one of them is heirloom barbecue in Atlanta. Okay, they make they they make barbecue. It's a barbecue joint, right? It's like a Korean yeah. barbecue infusion or whatever. Yes, yeah, it's, it's um, an amazing place. It's so good. The sandwiches and stuff, they make some pickles that do not taste like pickles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, all right. Uh, we got, we got one more question before we get to that. I did just want to give one last thanks, uh, to our season three sponsors. So this is technically, uh, episode one of season four. Uh, but we were, uh, it was great working with, uh, John Canaris over at Oxia time, uh, for season three being our, our, our presenting sponsor for season three. They're a great partner. Um, oh, you know, one last time we'll definitely say, uh, go check them out. Uh, oxiatime.com. That's A X I A T I M E.com. Uh, great time pieces. I'm wearing mine right now. Um, they had, you know, 2021 national championship, uh, collection for Georgia. They've got a 2022 collection for Georgia. Um, you know, multiple faces, multiple bands, um, high quality Swiss watches. Uh, definitely go check them out. Um, you know, come with custom engraving on the back. All that stuff's included. So it's a great product. Um, I know John and I both we both love ours. Uh, so just you know, once again, I want to say thanks to John uh, over at Oxia Time. Absolutely. Let's run it back. Run it back. <laughs> Amazing. And hey, if you want to get a custom watch for any organization you're involved with, uh, you can reach out to them and they, they can work on that with you. Um, all right. Last, we have uh, UGA picks that go hard. So like if you like UGA and you like picks that go hard, you love this account. Be sure to go check it out. Um, Mount Rushmore of the following categories. Uh, moments from the 2022 season. Where do you, what mm. are your Mount Rushmore of 2022 season moments? Mm. Man, uh, it's got to be, I'd say for sure, Stetson getting his, mm. getting his, his walk off, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. Standing ovation for Stetson. I would say the Jalen, uh, Jalen Carter lift mm. in the SEC mm. championship. That's good. I would say uh, A.D. Mitchell. In the end zone versus Ohio State has got to be mm. another one. Ugh, that's that's painful, but yes, I'm not going to disagree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, but I'm, it is what I'm, it is. It is what it is. I mean, I guess I can make an honorable uh, – that, that could be an honorable mention given the circumstances. <laughs> that's but fine. Maybe, maybe like the Brock Bowers reaching out for the first down mm. situation. Yes, that's good. That's good. And Kirby Smart doing the wind-up. <laughs> nice okay i'll go uh i'll go kirby on that note i'll go kirby fdmf um against south carolina i'm gonna go uh shutting down tennessee's greatest offense ever in the rain uh, um man i think dude the the brock <laughs> bowers stretching out for the first down is so good yeah. uh i think i'll go that one and yeah uh, so that was what? That was three for me. I'm trying to like come up with other ones that you didn't say. Um, <laughs> because I already copied one. All right. How about this one? Uh, the play that set up the AD Mitchell, the AD Mitchell touchdown, the okay. deep pass to Kiaris Jackson. Yes. <laughs> Kiaris with the, 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 the big, the big flex. You could also throw Arian Smith's touchdown out there. Like, Yep, yep. D- dancing by himself in the end zone. And, you know, I'll throw uh, another one, maybe honorable mention, one we didn't mention. Uh, Christopher Smith having the presence of mind to look around and return a field goal for 95 yards for a touchdown in the SEC Championship was, game. That's not that was, that was pretty amazing, yeah. And then uh, Mountain Rushmore of Summertime Foods. Who wants to know? Oof, Mountain Rushmore of Summertime Foods. 
watermelon's got to be on there for sure. Mm. Yes. Um, I would say burgers have got to be on there too with yep. lettuce and ketchup. Um, <laughs> Um, I mean, I don't cook a lot of, I don't don't cook a lot of uh, barbecue in the summertime, but yeah, I feel like barbecue is missing off that list for some reason, but like, I don't cook a lot, we don't cook a lot of barbecue or I don't eat a lot of barbecue in the summertime. It's mostly like a fall thing. I don't know why. Um, I I would say for the Powell family, um, the Friday night pizza, um, at the, Mm. at the the pool is, is a, a, (laughs) <laughs> it is goaded as Carter would say. It is goaded. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> um, pizza at the pool, watermelon, grilled corn would be another one. Of, okay. Uh, another, another Powell staple. All right. I'm going to go, uh, I'm, uh, shocking. There'll be a lot of overlap, but I'll, I'll, I'll start with the one that is an overlap. Uh, homemade ice cream. Uh, it's mm. a big, uh, wood family and, uh, and, and, and back, higher up, uh, Caudell family. So my, my mom, my mom's side, um, I was always big. Uh, we used to always do, uh, homemade ice cream and my uh, grandparents like carport back in the day. And so we, we still do that. So we've got ice cream makers. So we love to do that in the summer. So that's, what's, that's what's, my only variable. What's the go-to, what's the go-to flavor? All right. So it's gotta be, a, so for me, this is my personal Peach, preference. Is this gotta right? be, wow. Well, see, I love a vanilla base. Right. So I want to do stuff that starts with, with vanilla. Um, if you mix a fruit in it, it does kind of take it over. So growing up, I would say peach, uh, my mom's dad made like some serious peach ice cream that was like Mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, he also, okay, this one will surprise you. He made a banana that was really good. That doesn't Um, surprise me at all. Yeah. So there were, he would, he was really good. The fruit ones. Oh, you can make, you can make like a legit banana pudding ice cream. Yeah. So like for stuff that we tend to, we, we tend to do more like topping type stuff. So I love like, uh, just doing like Reese's pieces or, um, we used to do Oreo, um, uh, but with being gluten free, we don't do that so much anymore, but you could get, Oreo is really good. You can get a lot of legs out of vanilla ice cream. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. I love vanilla that, uh, so I'm a big on a vanilla base. So that's so, awesome. That's uh, awesome. Uh, you, you could, you could do, you could like really like put Hunter into peak, into peak form for the masters by making a peach ice cream sandwich, just mm, get some, get some sugar cookie, to. get some sugar cookie and some peach ice cream and like really go to town on that. All right. I'm going to have to do that this summer. <laughs> Noted. Noted. Shout out, shout out to the rest of my family who missed out on the peach sandwiches, peach ice cream sandwiches at the masters. Cause I literally got one of the last ones. <laughs> <laughs> nice. on, on the day, on the day that we went, uh, <laughs> nice, nice. I did not know, by the way. It, it was not. It was not on purpose. I did not know. I just happened to be in line. All right. So to round out my Rushmore, my Mount Rushmore. So I said, I'm an ice cream. I got to have hamburgers. I agree with watermelon. Uh, mm, barbecue. I guess I could do barbecue, but hot, like hot, hot dogs. How about hot yeah, dogs? yeah. For me, yeah, me, my family isn't as big in hot dogs, but I'll say I'll say hot dogs because for me, barbecue is more of a fall and, and winter thing for me. Personally. I agree is where I usually make it. So, yeah, because you're like you gotta you gotta like you know, I mean, I assume you have to like babysit a little bit and like constantly mm-hmm. going constantly going out there in the ninety degree heat. is yeah. is, is not ideal. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, that, that rounds it out for the listener question. So thanks everyone for, for reaching out. You know, we, we kind of posted on a whim <laughs> on Wednesday <laughs> afternoon. Hey, we're recording right. and uh, you guys didn't disappoint and always come with the great questions. So definitely appreciate that. Uh, well, man, it was good. A, it was good. Just catching up. We I have agree. talked in between. We did talk once, which I, <laughs> I did mention this. I, I, it was hilarious when like we had a non podcasting conversation where I just like called you on the phone. And I think we both, yeah. at least like I had reactions for like my family, like who are you on the phone with? I was like, I'm talking to John. And they looked at me weird. <laughs> and like, well, you're not podcasting. I was like, well, we're allowed to just talk. <laughs> <laughs> we are friends. Uh, oh, <laughs> we can do more than text and podcast. Uh, it's pretty funny. So, <laughs> but that was still, that was still a while ago. So it's good to catch up. Yeah, man. Um, Man, we, we need football. We need football in a bad way, I feel like, in some yeah. in some in some circles. 
Uh, <laughs> where, where, when was it? I feel like I feel like this came up. Like we were talking about this. Like we need football bad. Like because we were talking about some something stupid on Twitter. I feel like was happening. Yeah. I like, why, yeah. why are we talking about this? <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't remember what it was either. But you you said it, and I agreed. Uh, I'm sure it was something. <laughs> When when you start to see the things squirrel online, then you're like, oh, "We need football." <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like when we're when we're waiting with bated breath on the next Lane Kiffin tweet, <laughs> that's when that's when you know you need. You maybe know you need, you need maybe that's what it was about. Was it about all the photoshops, all the edits of like the school, the only school with insert whatever it was? I actually really appreciated that because that was hilarious. We haven't talked about that, but like. <laughs> <laughs> So what started it? It was Auburn, right? It was Auburn. It always, it's always Auburn. Auburn. The only school with the Buckies. Isn't that what it was? Wasn't that the first yeah, one? It's, yes. Okay. I, a, a recruit. It wasn't even like the. Yeah, it wasn't. Auburn, it, like, they yeah. were just guilty by association. Like some recruit, like I guess, tweeted a graphic that either Auburn made or someone made look like Auburn made. <laughs> right. Uh, about a Buckies that was the only school in the SEC with the Buckies. And. I just, I just laughed. I just laughed so hard at that. And then everybody, like, it, it kind of caught fire from there. Oh, Graham, Graham basically said, Hey, we need to have someone do a little Italy in Athens on this one. And John was so kind to oblige with uh, the Brock Bowers little Italy mashup. And then I, I was, I was sad to find that there's <laughs> another one in Auburn, but we did, we just kind of ignored that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need, we don't need to involve facts in these kinds of graphics. Yes. Yeah. I, I will say that I've gone like, I've got, I've been to Auburn multiple times and I've never heard anybody talk about little Italy there. Well, yeah. The one in Athens was the original and it's, it opened like, like my senior year of high school, I think. Um, mm. So it opened like in like mid late nineties. And that was the first one. And then they ended up franchising it. So I don't know how old the other ones are. Um, but apparently the Al- there was one in Alabama too, and it closed, I think. Mm. Uh, so they, they can't claim it anymore. But yeah, unfortunately, there actually is one in Auburn. But whatever. Yeah. We don't need facts. That was <laughs> hilarious. We don't need facts, yeah. I, I can't even remember what the Lane Kiffin one said. But the one that Lane tweeted out was incredible. <laughs> It was it was the only school in the SEC with a Chevron that has chicken on a <laughs> chicken on a stick or something like that. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Which which I guess that like Ed Ed Orgeron had had also like mentioned in a uh, in an LSU <laughs> in an LSU press conference of all of all things. But uh, yeah, it, it started it started every, all all the things start with Lane Kiffin talking smack about stuff. Uh. <laughs> Amazing. Like he Amazing. posted something today about uh like he took a picture and all of a sudden it became who can who can complete this uh, obstacle course because he he took a picture on the beach <laughs> and it was like one of those like in the ocean obstacle courses that the kids usually do and it's like what SEC coach can complete this this obstacle course. Amazing. I did see that too. I don't know. I like I I like having Lane in the SEC like new Lane. Uh, like Tennessee Lane was lame, but now I find him to be pretty funny. So, uh, Tennessee Lane Kiffin was was awful. I would also say that USC Lane Kiffin is terrible. I feel like he's found his home. Yeah. He's kind of he's kind of filled the void that used to be there with uh, the pirate. Mm. I, I will say mm. he also tweeted out a picture of a pirate ship recently, which was also pretty cool. Uh, that was awesome. Yep. Yep. Man, Lane bringing the bringing the Twitter content. <laughs> the off season because it's because it's off season. Like nobody else is having any fun with this stuff. Like you got right. you got Nick Saban going to Italy for the summer, basically, and like just taking. Apparently, he does have time for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, then, um, and then you've got Kirby Smart just collecting five star recruits. Like I mean, it's, it's kind of like rinse repeat. So like Lane Lane's the only one having fun out there. It feels like. Oh, so good. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, we'll have we'll have to spend uh, we'll have to have less less time lapse between now and our our next episode. So we'll have to make sure that happens. Agreed. Agreed. We need to have some folks on. We need to we need to dust off the <laughs> the ideas sheet and actually execute on it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Awesome, man. All right. Well. It was fun catching up. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for the for sending the questions. It was that was a lot of fun uh, catching up and going through those as well. 
And uh, what's what's the what's the day count? We're days we're to count down to kickoff. Yeah, we're ninety four. We're, we're at ninety four days. We're ninety four days. Yeah, yeah. Who's ni- who's ninety four? You know, so I didn't do a countdown to kickoff thread <laughs> like we had last year. I was thinking about it. Like I was trying to do something different than just like players. I was starting to think through like things that happened in that year. So like ninety four was like Zyers last year. That team had a bit of a rough go. But uh, we're we're Quentin Moses days away. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. R.I.P. That's a good one. I like that one. Good yeah. Tool. On that note, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll sync back up on 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 better on better terms <laughs> or something. Yeah. No. Go go dogs. <laughs> Checks out. Go dogs. <laughs>